endoscopic ultrasound-guided liver biopsy using a 22-gauge fine needle biopsy needle, a prospective study. Introduction. Tissue acquisition and histopathological evaluation continue to play an essential role in the management of patients with liver disease. Liver biopsy can reveal a diagnosis in up to 96% of patients and may alter management in up to 18% of patients. With the increasing incidence of liver disease, particularly non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, liver biopsy is expected to play an increasingly important role in its diagnosis, staging, and management. Traditional methods of liver biopsy include percutaneous, blind, image-guided, transvenous, transjugular, transfemoral, and surgical, open, laparoscopic. Endoscopic ultrasound, EUS, evaluation of cholestatic and mixed-type liver chemistry abnormalities is frequently sought to exclude nonparenchymal etiology. If EUS evaluation is unrevealing, such patients have traditionally been referred to a separate specialist for a liver biopsy, frequently causing a delay in the diagnostic workup, in addition to the extra time and cost of a separate procedure. In recent years, same-session EUS-guided liver biopsy, EUSLB, has gained traction among endosonographers and may offer several potential advantages over existing techniques for liver tissue acquisition. With a histologic diagnosis rate of 93.9% and adverse events rate of 2.3%, EUSLB appears to be a safe and viable alternative. However, despite the advantages it may offer over traditional methods of liver biopsy, concerns regarding tissue fragmentation, tissue adequacy, and bleeding risk continue to hamper the widespread adoption of EUSLB in clinical practice. EUSLB is a technically reproducible approach regardless of body habitus because the needle needs only to traverse the gastric or duodenal wall to reach the hepatic parenchyma. The procedure is performed in an outpatient setting and provides the comfort of sedation and analgesia. The EUS provides high-resolution images of the left lobe of the liver along with a sizable portion of the right lobe of the liver. This, coupled with the capability of Doppler imaging, allows the biopsy needle to be safely directed into the liver for sampling under real-time image guidance. It has been recognized that sampling error can lead to diagnostic inaccuracy of a biopsy from a single site. In comparison with ultrasound or computed tomography, CT scans, EUS allows an easy and safe biopsy of both left and right lobes of the liver in the same setting, while potentially addressing concerns about sampling error. Also, the main expense of the EUSLB is the endoscopic procedure, along with the cost of the fine needle biopsy, FNB, needle, which is not different in expense to the cost of the needle for either percutaneous or transjugular approaches. Thus, this approach may best be utilized for patients requiring EUS for evaluation of elevated liver function test findings. If no obstructive lesion that would require endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, is identified, then EUSLB can be performed in the same session. To our knowledge, the EUS needles that have been most studied for EUSLB for evaluation of parenchymal liver disease are a 19-gauge fine needle aspiration, FNA, needle, and, more recently, an FNB needle. While smaller in size than most non-EUS needles used for liver biopsy, the 19-gauge needle may be difficult to maneuver, especially in the duodenum while accessing the right lobe of the liver. There is scant literature on the use of potentially safer and presumably easier to maneuver smaller gauge EUS needles that are commercially available. Despite the potential advantages, such needles have not been used for EUS LB, largely because of concerns surrounding tissue adequacy for evaluating parenchymal liver disease. The author sought to address this issue by evaluating a 22-gauge FNB needle while using a technique in which the needle is kept straight during slow expulsion of the specimen from the needle. In our clinical practice, this technique has consistently yielded adequate core samples. Hassan et al. hypothesized that a small-gauge FNB needle may yield adequate histology-grade tissue with minimal adverse events. Methods Patients referred for evaluation of elevated liver enzymes and without obstructive disease requiring endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, were included. Using a 22-gauge FNB needle, two passes were made from the left lobe and one from the right. The main outcome measure was adequacy of the specimen for histology interpretation, and the secondary outcome was the safety of a U.S.-guided liver biopsy with a 22-gauge FNB needle.
Patients were followed for post-procedure complications for 30 days. Results, 40 patients, median age 61 years, 26 women, underwent EUSLB. Analyzing by needle passes, the median longest core fragment was 12 millimeters, first quartile to third quartile, 10 millimeters to 16.25 millimeters, interquartile range, IQR, 6.25 millimeters, from the left lobe, and 11 millimeters, 10 millimeters to 15.75 millimeters, IQR 5.75 millimeters, from the right lobe. The median cumulative core length per patient was 55 millimeters, 44.5 millimeters to 68 millimeters, IQR 23.5 millimeters. The median cumulative number of complete portal tracts, CPTs, per patient was 42, 28.5 to 53, IQR 24.5. The specimen was considered adequate in all 40 patients, 100%. Self-limiting abdominal pain was reported in 6 patients, 15%. Conclusion. EUSLB using a 22-gauge FNB needle is a safe and viable alternative to the use of larger-gauge needles, yielding adequate tissue for evaluation of parenchymal disease in 100% of the patients.